know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. Twenty-one-year-old Billy Bonney in the Santa Fe jail since December 27, 1880, awaiting his hanging trial, wrote his third pardon plea letter to Governor Lew Wallace on March 4, 1881. The first two were unanswered. This time, he highlighted Wallace's pardon bargain with incriminatory truth, saying, I have done everything that I promised you I would and you have done nothing that you promised me. He also expressed feeling abandoned and worse of determination to hang him. He even doubted his loyal attorney and now judge Ira Leonard, who ultimately did initially defend him in his hanging trials. And Santa Fe Ring partisan U.S. Marshal John Sherman had made him a public spectacle as outlaw Billy the Kid. But unbroken, Billy warned against underestimating his partisan friends. In fact, his Santa Fe ring captors were so afraid of a rescue that they kept him in the jail while awaiting completion of railroad tracks to Messia for secure transport. Emphasizing his plight, Billy gave his letter's location as Santa Fe in jail. I wrote, Governor Lou Wallace, Dear Sir, I wrote you a little note the day before yesterday, but have received no answer. I expect you have forgotten what you promised me this month two years ago, but I have not, and I think you ought to have come and seen me as I requested you to. I have done everything I promised you I would, and you have done nothing that you promised me. I think when you think the matter over, you will come down and see me, and I can then explain everything to you. Judge Leonard passed through here on his way east in January and promised to come and see me on his way back, but he did not fulfill his promise. It looks to me like I am getting left in the cold. I am not treated right by Sherman. He lets every stranger that comes to see me through curiosity in to see me, but will not let a single one of my friends in, not even an attorney. I guess they mean to send me up without giving me any show, but they will have a nice time doing it. I am not entirely without friends. I shall expect to see you sometime today. I signed it. Patiently waiting. I am very truly yours. Respect, William H. Bonney. Wallace never responded. Any conscience he had was buried beneath his self-protection from the ring, and he was meanwhile basking in acclaim of his just-released bestseller book, Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. Just 13 days after Billy's letter, Archbishop Lamy in Santa Fe wrote to him, Permit me to thank you for your fine book, Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. I have read it all through and find it very interesting. I think also it is written in good Christian spirit. Hypocrite Wallace likely missed the irony. Mm -hmm. 